Gotta keep going, gotta keep trying. There's no point in trying, even on those harder days. So, what do you want to do today, Wes? Daddy! Seriously? Hi, my name is Leslie Harder, and I'm sorry to hear that you're having a harder day. If you're wondering why I'm shooting from the shed, it's because it's a beautiful day outside, but it is just too windy. So I have the shed door open. Weston's playing just out there in the yard. I can see him clearly and do my recording at the same time. Today I want to discuss something really important. I know that for a lot of us on our hardest days, we don't know how we're going to make it to the end of the day. And by that I mean we don't know how we're going to make it to the end of the day without self-harming. Those impulses can be so intense. And so I want to share with you my plan for self-preservation. Last winter, I went through the worst crisis I've been through in years. I managed to get myself a counselor and here's what she told me to do. Step one, build yourself a support team. Know who you can go to. Write down that list. Write down the list for other people in your household to be able to see. Um, make sure that all the adults that you live with are aware of the situation and also fill in your partner, your spouse, whoever you may be in a relationship with anyone that you typically go to for support or people that you speak with regularly should be aware of where you're at with your mental health. Secondly, contact a local friend. Make sure that they know how you're doing. That way, if you ever have an emergency where you need someone with you immediately and in person, there's someone close by that you can contact. Another person that can be on the list is a friend who gets it. Um, I have a friend with MS who understands what it's like to live with chronic pain. I have another friend who deals with a lot of the brain fog and the distraction that I deal with. I have another friend who is a stay-at-home parent to a young child and understands the stresses and the lack of sleep involved in that. And so those are my go-to people for people who get it and who can empathize with me. Another person you can have on the list, which may be the same as the last person, the person who gets it, is an encourager. For myself, my encourager friend is someone who I met through the church that I attend, and she prays for me and uplifts me and makes me feel fueled and good and positive about the world. Aside from having people that you can talk to about it, it's also really good to have someone on your list who can distract. Someone who's silly. Someone who always has something interesting to say. Someone who has an adorable puppy that you can cuddle. Someone who has a bunch of jokes or um, interesting stories up their sleeve. A distraction is a great way to get through the hardest days. Last but not least, I find it very important to have someone on the list with professional training. This can be your doctor, a psychiatrist, a counselor, a therapist. It can be someone through your church. Um, it can be someone through the local community center. Um, and if none of these options are available to you, there are helplines that I'm going to list at the end of this video. Um, I've used so many times in the past myself and it's often all that's needed to just de-escalate a situation when I'm by myself and all I can do is ruminate and allow things to grow bigger and more terrifying inside my mind. When it comes time to ask people to be a part of your support team, communication is very important. Sometimes people can put their own burdens on their own shoulders based off of what they think support means. And sometimes you may not even be looking for the kind of support that they're wanting to give. So communicate clearly on what your needs are and also what you're not looking for. When you're letting people know how they can help you, 
be clear. Say something like, I need somebody to talk to, but I'm not looking for advice. I'm just looking to vent. Do you have time to listen? Or you can say, I just am reaching out to keep myself accountable. I'm not looking for advice. Or you can say, I need someone to just tell my biggest problems to, but without anyone overreacting or panicking, I'm not looking for someone to drop everything that they're doing and run to my rescue. If you are looking for someone to talk to, let them know how often you'd like to speak. What I did is I told my friend that I would send her a private message once every morning. The deal was that she would respond letting me know what her day looked like. So if she had the time to chat, great. Sometimes I needed that. Sometimes she had the time to chat and I wasn't in a place to talk and I let her know that then as well. Um, but it was a great thing to have a point of contact every single day, to have a reason to get out of bed, and to also to remind myself that I'm not alone in the world. I also arranged an emergency word with her. I was not thinking very clearly at the time, and so it wasn't super creative, but my emergency word was emergency. Uh, so anyway, the deal was that I would send my friend a text message with the word emergency in it. And if I did not contact her again within 10 minutes, uh, then she would contact my husband and he would rush to wherever I was to make sure that I was okay. Because that friend was not always available in person to come to me herself, but my husband was not always necessarily available to take my texts and calls every time I was in a crisis. So this way, when it was a true emergency, um, we would be aware of that and my friend would let my husband know. I know that not everybody has the resources, not everybody has the time, not everybody has it within themselves to make certain things happen. But if you can, this is what I would do. I would spend more time outside. And I don't mean, oh, go in the sunshine and the vitamin D will take away your depression because that's really undermining a serious issue. It's so much more than that. But for me, when I want to self-harm and I'm outside, there's a lot less things around that I can hurt myself with. And there's a lot of beautiful, breathtaking distractions to put me in a different mindset for the day. If you can help it at all, don't be alone. Have someone take a sick day from work and stay with you if possible. Or reach out to someone that you know doesn't work. Or go over to a friend's house if they can't come to you. Or call a hotline so that you have someone to speak to. Or video call a friend that maybe doesn't live close to you anymore but do whatever it takes to make sure that you remember there are people all around you who very much want to be involved in your life and who want to support you and encourage you through the toughest times in life it may seem so insignificant but sometimes the tiniest little steps can help for me i need to make sure that i always have a creative outlet so that I can let go of the feelings. Um, this can be done through baking, through gardening, through painting. For me, it's through writing songs and making these YouTube videos. Find something that you really love that screams something important to you. And it doesn't have to have any significance to anyone else. Back when I was having an especially hard time, I made it a point to get outside every single sunrise and sunset and take a picture and that kept me going for several weeks and eventually there was a point where it didn't do anything for me anymore but in those weeks that it did help I'm just glad that I had something to push me to the next moment well I do want to see what that next sunrise looks like I do want to see that next sunset and sometimes that's all you need 
My last piece of advice is something that I came up with myself that I hope will be as helpful for you as it has been for me. But one day I thought about why can't I just love myself more? I have a big heart. If I'm honest, I love other people so very fully. And what I really need to do is start talking to myself like I'm someone I care about. You wouldn't think it would be that hard, but if I pretend that I am someone, my spouse, my best friend, I speak to myself completely differently. Give yourself patience. Give yourself empathy. Give yourself time. Give yourself grace. Tell yourself anybody would be struggling in my shoes. I'm not a failure. I am not a summary of my experiences. And I am enough even when I'm not in a place to accomplish my goals. Beyond speaking to yourself as someone you love, treat yourself like someone you love too. Take yourself on a date, have a bubble bath, drink some wine, eat a chocolate bar, eat that cake, whatever you want to do that makes you feel good. Paint your nails, shave your legs, do your makeup. And honestly, I've had people come up to me and say, Leslie, you've put on so much makeup today and usually you don't wear any. Are you trying to prove something? No. You know what I'm doing? First of all, none of your business, but you want to know what I'm doing? I'm taking care of myself, putting on my makeup, makes me feel creative, makes me feel energized, makes me feel excited to play with colors and to express myself. And it gives me time in my day to think about something other than what's weighing me down. So I encourage you all to just keep trying. And when you don't know where to turn, reach out, reach out, reach out out there is always someone who's reaching back and I'm so sorry that sometimes it takes a lot of effort to find them but they're there and I'm one of them and you can reach out and I care about you There's a couple things I forgot to mention that I think need to go on the self-preservation list. One, take care of yourself. Eat, sleep, shower, take your medications as prescribed. Next, if you're feeling up to it, do something kind for someone else. It's a great distraction and it helps breathe positivity into your life. Something I need to share is that suicide has impacted my life because two years ago someone close to me took her life. I've been suicidal before and so I feel that there probably was nothing I could have done to have stopped her. But at the same time I don't blame her for one second because it's so hard to find the right help. And that's why I think it's important to put this out there and to share the information about where and how we can get help. 
please check out these websites. They have amazing resources available to you and it's free. I really, truly hope that your harder days are soon to be over.